Hey everyone, I'm sure you've already heard about the racist incident that took place over the weekend on the campus of the University of Oklahoma. The, uh, I'm referring of course to the incident in which members of the local chapter of the Sigma Alpha Epsilon fraternity, or SAE or SAE as it's known for short, um, were on a bus riding to one of their parties when a number of the members broke out into a chant um, of, of a song that's breathtakingly racist in its lyrics. We, there'll never be a nigger at say, there'll never be a nigger at say. You can hang them from a tree, but they'll never sign with me. There'll never be a nigger at say. So go the lyrics. So of course, um, of course, someone on the bus had the decency to record this incident, and they actually passed along the footage to a member of an African-American student group on campus called Unheard. And that group proceeded to make the footage public. So the headquarters, the national headquarters of SAE, the fraternity, immediately responded by condemning uh, the incident, closing down the local U of Oklahoma chapter of the fraternity for at least four years. And the university administration itself also condemned the racism in that chant unreservedly and immediately moved to cut all ties with that, uh, with that fraternity on campus. Um, if I'm not mistaken, the university actually owns the frat house, and so the university was able to order members of the fraternity to move out immediately. I think they have until midnight tonight to do so. Um, I actually agree with all of those responses to the incident itself. The chant is absolutely reprehensible and despicable, and um, I think it's a good thing that uh, it was that it's been brought to public light and uh, been exposed, so that um, the dealings and goings on in this fraternity, which has actually gotten into hot water in the past when it comes to racial issues, can be uh, further brought to the public's attention. However, a lot of folks have also been musing about the possibility that these students may be expelled. For example. Or, or otherwise punished by the university administration um, for violating their code of conduct. For example, yesterday evening I was watching CNN um, and I saw Wolf Blitzer interview the president of the University of Oklahoma. Wolf asked him quite uh, casually, you know, he said, why not simply expel these students? And the university president, to his credit to a certain extent, um, said, well, you know, we need to consult with our legal department first and make sure that we're on firm legal, firm legal ground when we do so. Now, when the president made that, res uh, that remark, he referred to the Constitution as a potential barrier to, you know, penalizing these students. Um, and he referred to the Civil Rights Act, which requires the administration to prevent the creation of a hostile environment for minorities on campus, minorities and women. But unfortunately, the president of the university did not mention the First Amendment and the right to free speech explicitly in that interview, or as far as I know, in any of his other public communications about this incident. That, I think, is unfortunate because that's actually the main obstacle to penalizing these students for pulling this stunt. As a matter of fact, um, you know, everything I've studied about the First Amendment and the right to free speech in the United States and the, Supreme, the U.S. Supreme Court's jurisprudence on that subject leads me to conclude that the University of Oklahoma would not be on firm ground in penalizing these students for doing this. Um, it can condemn them, which it's already done and is continuing to do, and rightly so, but it cannot p uh, expel them from the school or otherwise punish them simply for expressing racist attitudes and opinions. Um, and I don't think it should be able to do that either. Um, the text of the first, and this is, this is important, right? This is an important point because there are a lot of misconceptions about this floating around out there. There's a lot of misinformation. A lot of it comes from people who really ought to know better. The fact of the matter is that there is no hate speech exception, if you will, to the First Amendment right to free speech. No such exception exists. There are a number of exceptions to the right to free speech in this country, the constitutional right to free speech, but hate speech is not one of them. A lot of folks out there, particularly college students and sometimes college professors, which is really unconscionable because they ought to know better, um, like to claim that you know hate speech, or at least what they consider hate speech, is not free speech and therefore um, should not be shielded from censorship. But they're wrong. Nothing in the text of the First Amendment 
nor in the Supreme Court's jurisprudence on free speech, indicates that there is any kind of hate speech exception um, to that First Amendment right. The Supreme Court has actually said it made it clear, uh, made the opposite very clear in a number of cases that it's handed down over the years. For example, um, as far back as 1969, the Supreme Court was protecting the right of the Ku Klux Klan of all organizations to, um, you know, to uh, to express its racist views as long as it does so in a, in a peaceful manner, um, without breaking any laws or committing any violence or or in trying to incite imminent lawless action or what have you. Um, in a number of other cases, the Supreme Court has stated very clearly that uh, even speech that people consider offensive or hateful is still protected by the First Amendment. In a case, uh, in the case of Texas versus Johnson uh, from 1989, for example, the Supreme Court said, and I quote, the government may not prohibit the verbal or nonverbal expression of an idea merely because society finds the idea offensive or disagreeable, end of quote. Um, in another case called Iota Xi Chapter of Sigma Chi Fraternity versus George Mason University, this is a 1993 case, um, one of the uh, Federal Circuit Courts stated, and again I quote, the First Amendment does not recognize exceptions for bigotry, racism, and religious intolerance or ideas or matters that some may deem trivial, vulgar, or profane. End of quote. Now, in 2011, I remember uh, the Supreme Court handing down a decision in the case of Snyder versus Phelps, um, in which it actually protected the First Amendment right of members of the Westboro Baptist Church you know, a, a, an insanely homophobic organization from Topeka, Kansas, um, to protest outside the funerals of American soldiers who have been killed in combat um, to protest against gay rights and equality for, for LGBT people in American society. Now, if that's not hate speech, I don't know what is. And yet the Supreme Court has made it clear that that speech is constitutionally protected. The same would therefore go for this kind of uh, shenanigan that these racist punks in the uh, SAE fraternity at University of Oklahoma have just pulled, right? If the Westboro Baptist Church's speech is constitutionally protected, then I think that uh, this kind of racist chant, as hateful and despicable as it is, is equally protected by the First Amendment. And I agree that it should be. I don't believe in censorship, even of uh, ideas that express hatred for various groups, even my own group, my own people, Remember, I do come from a historically uh, oppressed and persecuted group myself, and that's the group that was targeted um, for this particular hateful expression in this incident. Yet I don't, believe, I don't believe in censoring this kind of speech. For one thing, um, I think it's important to be able to prove to people by citing real-world examples um, that we don't live in some kind of post-racial society in which race or racism is no longer a factor. Um, but it's only harder to prove that case if the government, in this case in the form of a public university administration, um, seeks to suppress the expression of those hateful ideas. If the government's efforts at censorship, censorship succeed and um, these ideas, you know, the people who believe in these ideas are effectively shut up, then it's only that much harder for the rest of us to prove that there are people out there who think this way and who would act on these beliefs if given the chance. Because these people have the right to express these views, they often stupidly <laughs> go ahead and do so in public or in, even in, in private contexts like this one. These students were on a bus rented by their frat to take them to a private party. Um, but they're, you know, they often get videotaped or what have you, and uh, the footage is made public, and so they get exposed. That's a good thing for society, in my view. Um, you know, I've seen commentary on this subject on Facebook. I remember one person posted a comment saying, you know, no, they posted an article. I forget which website it's from, a left-wing uh, left website. It might have been Alternet or something like that, um, saying, you know, it's a good thing that these students in this video, while they were singing this chant, actually said the word nigger because that way no one can deny that this was a racist incident. No one can claim that, oh, we're just playing the race card or being too sensitive or misinterpreting the situation. Thank God that this was a case in which the students, the offending racists, made their racism crystal clear and indisputable, undeniable. Well, guess what? We wouldn't have um, the opportunity to cite this uh, incident to prove that there is still a problem with racism in American society or on the University of Oklahoma's campus specifically. We wouldn't be able to cite that 
if the government had successfully suppressed and censored that speech. So that's one reason why I think it's a good thing that um, that speech is constitutionally protected. Um, you know, if I'm on a campus like the University of Oklahoma's campus, and there are racists around me who would just as soon hang me as look at me, I want to know about it. I want these characters to crawl out from under their rocks and rear their ugly heads every now and then um, so that we know, first of all, so that I and other blacks on campus know who they are and so we know to watch our backs and around whom we should watch our backs and second of all so that we can call them out and prove them wrong, condemn their bigotry um, and just generally raise awareness among the general public about the persistence of this problem of racism on campus and in society at large. Um, you know, and, and that leads me to another point, a larger point. I think the right way to fight hateful speech is not with censorship. I think we should fight, uh, fight speech with speech, not with censorship. Um, the solution to hate speech, in my view, is love speech, not to have the government come in and try to force these ideas on the ground. Um, I think that that would only be counterproductive anyway, because when you do that, you're not actually going to change the minds of the people who hold these racist attitudes. You're just going to force them underground. <laughs> they're going to continue to associate with other people who they know share their views and they'll just be surrounded increasingly by other people who think exactly the same way they do. That'll only reinforce and if anything exacerbate their racist attitudes um, and make them, you know, if anything more extreme. That might make them more dangerous in the long run, more dangerous to public safety and, and, and to just, you know, racial and intercultural harmony. In, in the environment, the milieu in which they live, whether it's a university campus or somewhere else. Um, so, if anything, it's better for society to have these folks come out in the open, expose themselves every now and then, or be exposed by others, and, um, you know, have their ideas debunked, to be confronted by people who know better than they do and can prove their hateful notions wrong, instead of simply using government power to try to suppress them. So that's another reason why I think it's, it's, uh, it's not a good policy, morally or practically, or, um, well, while I think it's not a good policy, morally or practically, for a university, a public university administration to be able to punish students for doing this sort of thing. I think it's better for the university to do what U of Oklahoma has done so far, cut ties with the frat, condemn it in the strongest possible terms, join in the inevitable demonstrations on campus to lend your support to the students who are confronting this, this bigotry, but stop short of actually trying to penalize the students in question um, for doing this. Um, you know, so there is a disturbing trend towards increasing support for various forms of censorship in American society and a lot of other societies around the world too, for that matter. Um, and I think that that's an unfortunate thing. I think that people need to relearn the ideas of liberty that, uh, as one, um, as my former boss once put it, uh, that a lot of people have unlearned. And um, I think the campus of a university, particularly a public one, is most of all the kind of place where we need to have a free-flowing dialogue about these kinds of issues without the authorities coming in to try to suppress certain ideas that people find offensive or that are you know, just inherently and indisputably offensive, such as in a case such as this. So that's my take on this. Um, it would not be constitutional for the administration to expel or otherwise punish these students. It would not be morally justified for them to do so either. Um, so again, I look forward to hearing your feedback, agree or disagree, whether in whole or in part. Looking forward to hearing it.